like to greet the brethren, the ones who are here and the, the ones who are connected with us from Allendale and say the following. I don't like versions, I like translations. The version takes away the inspiration of the, the person who wrote it, composed it, because there are many things there that are completely off. The version for popular music is great, but for songs of praise, it is normal here in America, because there are wonderful songs here in America that we sing there in Brazil, and that here in the original, the message is way deeper how great you are. The message in English is how great are thou. It's a message much deeper. We didn't translate this, right? <laughs> it can be. But it is valid. It's valid. But people think more on the musicality. But it loses a lot of the message of the song. Because generally, the song, when the song inspired, it has a, a reason for being. Because when a servant is inspired to write a song, there is a, a motivation. At least the songs, there are inspired songs, because there is a lot of stuff that is not, is not out there. But the praise is something wonderful. And there is a lot of there are a lot of things that are inspired, especially the old, the old songs. Very well, this one song is very beautiful, by the way. I'd like to read with the brethren very quickly. I'm gonna say quickly because today is a, a day of prayer. I'm not gonna preach. It's just a short mess, short message. Second book of Samuel. Chapter 1, 2 Samuel, chapter 1, chapter 1, verse, verse 17 and 18, second book of Samuel, first book, the first chapter, verse 17, 18. Did he say second? Second Samuel, <coughs> chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Has everybody opened? Then David lamented with his lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son, and he told them to teach the children of Judah the songs of, of the bow. Indeed, it is written in the book of the of Joshua. The story is, is interesting that one of the characteristics of King David was he had, had a few characteristics that were very interesting, but the fear of the Lord. But here, Saul did everything he, he could to destroy David. And in fact, King Saul knew that he had already lost the blessing, had rejected the blessing. He had rebelled against the Lord, and that's why David had been risen on his place. And the sentence upon Saul was already given. He was going to die. And when he consults the, the witch, he had some, Samuel had already died. He consults the witch. He said that he wanted to speak with Samuel. And the witch caused Samuel to appear. And that's why many people think that he, people can return. And the one that he turned with the face of Samuel is that one. Everybody knows who he is. He went there to exactly to deceive Saul and said to Saul, you can go to the war, but you will die. There is no solution for you. Why? Because the sentence was not from the enemy. It was the Lord had already decreed. There was no solution. The enemy could not prevent that. Very well. So Saul went to the war. Everything happened. The lamentation, not only of David here, for the death of Saul, but also for Jonathan, who was his friend. David was a good friend of Jonathan. And David said something very interesting for a while. And we kept thinking about this. Why David said this? 
in the lamentation. Look how interesting when he laments the death of the anointed Saul and his son Jonathan. It says the following. He laments saying, Teach of the children of Judah the use of the bow. Why the use of the bow? I thought it was some uh, of an uh, aleatory expression, something with no meaning. But th there, there was a prophecy that was very important to me, because in the battle, in the war, in the war, you have many segments of the army. The soldier, the characters of the archer is different of the ones that were that used spear and the ones who carried the sword and the ones that had a battle face-to-face uh, -face or the, with the use of the spear or the sword were soldiers that had uh, were large soldiers but uh, physically strong they could not be weak people they had to, they were different from the archers because the combat of the archer was not uh, fight uh, person to person the combat of the archer was from a distance and what what was what it, the archer true they were extremely extremely capable they were trained for that and David said teach the people of Jew that the use of the bow and why is he saying that prophetically he's, he says something very interesting the battles of the Lord they do not depend on our physical means. The battles of the Lord, they depend on what the Lord gives us the means for, and the arch, and the bow. It is interesting because the bow, bow is made out of wood. At that time, it was made out of wood. It could not, could not be built with any kind of wood. It was not with any kind of wood that you could build a bow. There was a special wood that was used to to, to build uh, the arrow, but the, the bow had to be built in a special way. What kind of wood could you use to build the bow? It had to be a wood that had an ability to to be flexible. That would be very great. The wood that was on the the bow, you could you could bend it and even. Be, put one end to the other and would not break, would not suffer any fracture in the middle of the wood. It was different than other woods that the slightest bending, the slightest torsion would cause some woods to break, but not the, the bow. The bow is kind of, used kind of wood that could bend or create a large curvature because when you, when you like, stretch the bow, you know, to throw the arrow, it could uh, stretch uh, very far so that you can could so, could throw the arrow very far. So the Lord uses uh, the wood as uh, the symbol of man. What D David prophesied here was was regarding man that God wants to use in His battle, the man that God wants to use, and that's why He laments. Because Saul did not sub submit, Saul did not submit to the will of God. That's when Samuel told him, "Go to the war with the Amalekites and do not bring the spies of war." But he brought. But when Samuel went there to reproach him, he said, "What is the sound of uh, sheep and cows?" The Lord told you not to bring spoil, and you brought. And Saul and so I didn't bring it for me. I, I brought it to sacrifice to the Lord. But the Lord said. Not, not to bring anything, but Saul wanted to bring it to bring it to the service. There's how many people do they want to bring things from the world to put in in the service, and the Lord doesn't want that. You, God doesn't want you to bring things from the world to animate the service. God doesn't want that. When he waited for Samuel for the sacrifice, when when he didn't wait for Saul didn't wait for Samuel when when. Samuel arrived, he had already sacrificed. And Samuel told him, you're crazy. And Saul walked through disobedience, and that's why God rejected him. So when David said, teach the people the use of their bow, he says, the man, in order to be used by God, used to be flexible. 
It has to be pliable. It needs to shape to the will of God. Why? Because it is not his strength, but it is the strength. It is what God can do through the person. God is going to bless the fight, our uh, trials. We are not going to overcome with our physical strength, with our uh, human argument, human reason. The, the arrow that is thrown there speaks about revelation. It's the action of the Holy Spirit. It is not us who act. Many times we want to do a lot of things. We think that we want to change uh, this and that, uh, change the church, and then we go to consult the Lord, and God does everything different. I arrived to a region in, in, Minas, in Minas Gerais, a state in Brazil. I went there to give uh, a couple of instructions. The, the pastors gathered there to change the leadership there. And I sat down to watch, and they began to say this and that. Well, let's, let's consult the Lord. And I kept quiet. They consult a person to one place, another person to another place. They opened the Bible, closed the Bible, opened the Bible. And after they did all of this, I said, I just want to say one thing again. All the pastors are here, right? All the pastors are here. Yes, Amadeus. And then I said, Where's the spiritual gift? There's no spiritual gift. Oh, but we consulted the Bible. That's all right. But when we consulted the Word, we run the risk of failing on the discernment and interpretation of the text. Of course, always the Word is important, but we have learned with the Bible that the spiritual gift is very important even when you consult. Because the spiritual gift is a revelation, has an objective. That story. Speak, boss. I'm not a, a boss. So, what do you suggest? Uh, so, uh, I, my su I suggest is that we wait so that we can speak with the gifts and they say, hey, mate, hey, mate, let us sing a song. Everybody is all right. So, let us sing a song, a prayer, two songs and a prayer. And all of a sudden, somebody said, I had a vision that was very interesting. You can say the vision, my brother. Let us consult. The word was very clear, and the Lord said everything was wrong. It should undo everything that we have done until now. So now, it is not for this place, it's for another one, uh, for another location. Everything changed. So everybody started laughing. Everything changed. One pastor had said the following. This is the church that would not be, uh, the pastor, my home minister, I want to go to that place. And the Lord said, you're not going to go to that place. They had consulted, he was going to go there. My brother, teach the use of the bow. This work is the work of the Holy Spirit of revelation. So we, we need to learn the revelation because only that way we're not defeated because we're defeated by our own arguments, by our own reasons, because of what we think and man that submits is the word that is pliable, that submits to the will of the Holy Spirit. Perseveres. And we sometimes, we don't like this. We don't like to be like this. We like to do what, what we want, right? A uh, sister came to my church. Uh, she was from the church across the quarter in Brazil. She came to the end of the service. And there are a few brethren that are like this. I want to say what she, she said, what she did, and many of you are like that. Uh, Pastor, I, I consulted. I uh, want you to consult something because I have to the answer for something tomorrow morning. Oh, Amado, I need to consult the Bible today because I need to give an answer tomorrow morning. So I answer, I don't count on me. I don't count on me. And then she said, why? Oh, because I'm going to change my job. I'm going to receive a, a pr proposal to earn twice as much. Do you think I'm going to <laughs> do the consultation like this at the last minute? No, I'm not going to consult. You, uh, so, okay, so we're going to do an early dawn, we're going to fast until 9 o'clock, and then at night, I'm going to come down here at night, I'm going to consult the Lord, and so, oh my God, that's the only way. Oh, oh, I'm going to try, Amadeo. okay, then try. So these things of consulting you know, in a reckless way always goes wrong. We did the fasting and came that night, and then... That person has, oh, Amado was able to postpone, postpone to tomorrow. They will wait for me until tomorrow. Oh, very good. Okay, so let's consult. And then we consulted, and 
I brought two bread with the gift and that she was I'm gonna earn twice as much and is that all right and the brother said I had a revelation and she said which she was with a big smile she was going to earn twice as much Glory to God you can say my brother. the Lord said it's not oh oh mercy what her mercy my dear what did you want oh my dear oh boy I was going to earn twice as much a wonderful company am I there what am I going to do did you come to consult I wanted to consult the Lord but is it is that can you can you discern in a different way no I cannot discern and the whole word uh, all the words that the message there were open they confirmed the, the give it is not uh, okay very good she was with a face very angry it's okay she went away but there are Christians like this. She, she there are Christians like this. She, she was angry, but she obeyed. She had even forgot about forgotten about about it. Three months later, she raised her hand and she said, "I have an experience to share with you." I had even forgotten about it. Come here, come here, sit down. Remember the consultation, Amadeo? Yes, I remember the consultation about changing your job. You don't know what happened. That company went bankrupt. I was going to go to a company that went bankrupt. I was going to do the two jobs, and you wanted to go to the to the bankruptcy because you wanted to disobey. Teach my people the use of the bow, so that they don't lose the battles. That's what we need to do. That's all. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. If you consult the Lord, it's like a woman that wants to get married. The first thing, first bad thing that comes up and she, the God, Lord says no and then she persists and ends up marrying with this bad person oh oh they keep complaining oh, there's not a good uh, young man in the church so then then she goes out and picks up picks out a, a bad person in the world the Lord says no the Bible says teach my people how to use the bow the people of the Lord needs to be pliable with this flexibility that the Lord uses and the revelation flows and the Lord operates. I've seen this in the loss of Saul and, the, and uh, David says, teach the people of Judah how to use the bow. We need to use this in our lives, in our daily lives to be victorious. Amen. What are, are we going to sing? A uh, joyful song. I don't like I am very upset. I do, really don't like sad songs. There's always the appropriate moment. Uh, oh, the other day I came to church, the brethren sang. I was I sat down to preach the mass. I don't like the church the, the screaming, jumping up. No, I, I liked something that was happy, and the brethren were saying, "I'm going to going to live in. I see my heavenly city. This is a." A song for for awake. We we feel like we're about about to die. Everybody's going to die one day, but it's not like like this. Let's sing something different. Remember this the song that they used to sing in the past. Burning fire, my soul, my soul is. There is there's another one. Which one? You the one who looks like seem to be older. Tell me another song that is more animated. What is the other one? But there was another one. Ah, it couldn't be that one. <laughs> Burning fire, my soul is.
for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Bless your church, Lord, in this day, in the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with, with you now and forevermore. The church may be seated. The families are going to the families are going to be together so that they receive the prayer because today is a day of prayer. When I was coming here, a sister, very good friend of mine, she said, preach something that you're going to preach on the seminar, okay? So I'm sure that this is that I preach today, I'm going to say on the seminar. People somewhere really, <laughs> they really, they complain. So be sure that what I preach here, I'm going to preach on the seminar. Amen. Oh, next service is going to be on on Tuesday. Amen. Amen.